Number 16 Great Western Railway Number 6000 King George V as I said, back in my top 20 long-lost American and British steam locomotives, the Great Western Railway of the United Kingdom was best known for preferring 46010 wheelers over 462 Pacifics for their express passenger engines, resulting in more than 820 10-wheelers built between 1902 and 1950, divided into nine different classes. The largest class of Great Western 10-wheelers by that I mean the size of the engines themselves, were the 6000 class, otherwise known as the Kings, designed by Charles Collett, with 31 built at the GWR's main works at Swindon between 1927 and 1936, resulting in a total of 30 members. Now you're probably wondering, how could there be 30 members of the class if 31 engines have been built? There's actually a pretty good reason for that. In January of 1936, King Class No. 6007, King William III, was severely damaged in a collision with a set of cars from a goods train, or freight train, at Trevenham. It was deemed damaged beyond repair, then was later scrapped two months later, so a new King was built that took on its name and cab number. Probably the most famous member of the class is the prototype engine, No. 6000, King George V, built in June of 1927 and nicknamed the Bell after the special engraved brass bell the engine carries on top of its front buffer beam. The engine gained this special bell when just two months after being built in August of that year, it was shipped across the Atlantic to the United States to take part in the Fair of the Iron Horse, held to celebrate the centenary, or 100th anniversary, of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad where it definitely stood out against all the attending American and Canadian locomotives, thanks to its simple and elegant appearance. When the celebration came to a close, King George V was shipped back to the UK and put back in the regular service, heading express trains between London and Plymouth via Taunton, Bristol and Westbury, and London to Wolverhampton via Birmingham and Bicester, as those were the only lines where the King class could operate throughout the entire Great Western system due to their enormous size and weight. Well, enormous by British standards. And that's where number 6000 continued its career for the GWR and later British Railways following nationalization in 1948 until being withdrawn from service in December 1962, having clocked up nearly 2 million miles. Upon withdrawal from regular service, number 6000 was preserved as part of the national collection and was restored to mainline operating condition at Bulmer's Railway Center in Hereford. It returned to steam in 1971, officially breaking the steam ban set by British Railways back in 1968 following the 15 Guinea Special, the last scheduled steam-powered passenger train in the UK, in order to prohibit steam from operating on the main line and helped pave the way to the return of mainline steam in Great Britain. King George V continued in service on mainline rail tours until 1987 when its boiler ticket expired. Number 6000 is still owned by the National Railway Museum in York and recently was loaned out to the Museum of the Great Western Railway in Swindon back in 2015 along with GWR City Class No. 3440 City of Truro, to help celebrate Swindon 175 in 2016, held to celebrate 175 years since the inception of Swindon as a railway town back in 1841. Both engines were expected to remain on display at Swindon for five years, so they are most likely to return to the National Railway Museum sometime this year, if they haven't yet already, that is. Also, just to add, King George V isn't the only surviving Great Western King Class 10-wheeler, as it has two other surviving siblings, number 6023, King Edward II, and number 6024, King Edward I. Number 15 Midland Railway Compound Number 1000 Engine number 1000 is the sole survivor of a fleet of 45 three-cylinder compound 440 passenger engines built between 1902 and 1909 at Derby Works for the Midland Railway. The first five compounds, number 2631 to 2635, were designed by Samuel Wade Johnson, who was chief mechanical engineer for the Midland Railway between 1873 and 1903. 
The remaining 40 locomotives, built from 1905 onwards, were a more enlarged and simplified version designed by Johnson's successor, Richard Dealey, with the first dirty built that year, numbered 1000 to 1029 but were then later renumbered 1005 to 1034 in 1907, while Johnson's compounds became numbers 1000 to 1004. The final 10 compounds, numbered 1035 to 1044, were built between 1908 and 1909. And finally, the five Johnson-built compounds were rebuilt under Dealey's design in 1914, which also included number 1000 being fitted with a superheater. Now, before I continue talking about this class, for those who are unfamiliar with the concept of compound steam locomotives, here's a bit of info on how they work. On a conventional steam locomotive, steam from the locomotive's boiler would be channeled directly into two separate cylinders, or three, or four, depending on their design, and spent steam would be exhausted into the smoke box, mixing with the fire exhaust, then bolts were shooed out of the locomotive through the smokestack, or chimney, or funnel, whatever you'd like to call it. Heck, even a fat exhaust if you like. However, on a compound steam locomotive, they actually used the steam twice. Steam from the boiler would first be channeled into one or more high pressure cylinders. Then the steam, which is now at a lower pressure, would be exhausted into larger low pressure cylinders before being expelled into the smoke box, then out the chimney. In the Midland Compound's case, the steam from the boiler would first be channeled into the smaller, high-pressure cylinder set inside the frames that powered the front set of driving wheels by the center of the axle. Then the used steam would go into the larger, low-pressure cylinders on the outside that powered the driving wheels themselves, before being exhausted into the smoke box and then out the chimney. Anyway, the compounds mainly saw work pulling passenger trains throughout the Midland Railway, then later for the London, Midland and Scottish Railway following the Grouping Act in 1923. Since 1907, the class had retained their straight 1000 to 1044 numbering throughout the years on the Midland Railway, and even into the days of the Big Four when the Midland merged into the LMS. However, they would be renumbered 41000 to 41044 when the Big Four would nationalize into British Railways in 1948. In addition to the Midland built engines, the LMS also had their own compound 440s, with 195 built by four different locomotive works between 1924 and 1932, resulting in a grand total of 420 compound 440s. Both the Midland and LMS-built compounds were virtually identical to each other, the major difference between the two being their driving wheels. While the Midland compounds were built with 7-foot diameter driving wheels, the LMS compounds had slightly smaller 6-foot 9-inch diameter driving wheels. Withdrawal for both the Midland and LMS compounds took place between 1948 and 1961. None of the LMS-built compounds managed to survive. But fortunately, that is not the case for the Midland ones. The prototype engine, number 1000, originally number 2631, became the sole surviving Midland compound when it was set aside for preservation after being withdrawn from service in 1951, then was restored as close to its 1914 condition as possible, which also included being repainted into its original Midland Railway maroon livery. When this was completed in 1959, the newly restored No. 1000 operated on mainline rail tours running enthusiast specials until being placed on stag display inside the Clapham Transport Museum in 1962. The engine would only remain there for about 13 years until the museum closed and the Midland compound was then transferred to its new home in the, then new, National Railway Museum in York in 1975. Number 1000 was then returned to steam again and took part in the 150 cavalcade at Shieldon, held to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the Stockton and Darlington Railway. Another event Number 1000 took part in was the Rocket 150 cavalcade in 1980 five years later, to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the opening of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway back in 1830, as well as the famous Rainhill Trials one year before. The former Midland Railway compound's last run was in September 1983, when it pulled a special charter train for the National Railway Museum between York and Rockdale. Number 1000 still remains part of the National Collection at the NRM in York, but has been loaned out to other railway museums and heritage railways from time to time. 
Today, the engine is currently on loan to the Barrow Hill Roundhouse Railway Center in Derbyshire. It's unknown how long the engine is to remain there, or at least it's unknown to me, and it's more than likely that the engine will never steam again, but it would be nice to see it brought back to service. But if not, at least it's brought good memories to those who have seen this engine in action. Number 14 Canadian Pacific Royal Hudson's numbers 2839 and 2860. These next two locomotives are two of four preserved Canadian Pacific Railway semi-streamlined 464 Hudsons, better known as the Royal Hudsons, as well as five surviving Canadian Pacific Hudsons in general. The Canadian Pacific Railway had a total of 65 H1 class 464 Hudsons built by the Montreal Locomotive Works between 1929 and 1940. However, the first 20 CPR Hudsons built, the H1As and H1Bs, number 2800 to 2819, were non-streamlined, though some of them were also fitted with smoke deflectors. The three other subclasses were built with semi-streamlined bodies, the H1Cs with 30 numbered 2820, the 2845 built in 1937, the H1Ds with 10 numbered 2850, the 2859 built in 1938, and finally the H1Es with 5 numbered 2860, the 2864 built in 1940, which were also built as oil burners. The Royal Hudson saw work on all the main lines on the Canadian Pacific system, pulling almost all of Canada's transcontinental passenger trains. Well, except for the line between Montreal and St. John due to weight restrictions. These engines got the name Royal Hudson's in 1939, during King George VI and Queen Elizabeth of England's visit to Canada, the first time that any reigning monarch had ever visited the country, and of course, they would be touring the country by rail. Both the Canadian Pacific and Canadian National Railways were given the honors of hauling the King and Queen's Royal Train, with the CPR handling the westbound journey between Quebec City and Vancouver. The engine chosen to head the Canadian Pacific's train was number 2850, which had specially been painted silver and blue for the special train. It operated 3,224 miles across Canada, going through 25 crew changes without any problems with the locomotive. In fact, King George VI, who was also a bit of a rail fan, even got to ride in 2850's cab whenever it was possible for him to do so. He was also so impressed with the performance of the 2850, as well as the rest of the class, that he gave Canadian Pacific permission to call their semi-streamlined 464s Royal Hudsons, and to have them display royal crowns on their running board skirts. Of course, the Royal Hudsons weren't the only steam engines on the CPR to be streamlined. There were also their 2104 Texas types, named Selkirks, and their 444 Jubilees. The Royal Hudsons continued their work for the CPR until the diesels and retirement eventually caught up with these semi-streamlined 464s, and they were withdrawn from service during the mid-1960s. All but four of these engines would be scrapped, and two out of four of these engines even got the chance to operate in excursion service. When retired from regular service in 1959, number 2839 was originally intended to be sent to a museum in eastern Canada. However, instead, it ended up being sold to a group of new owners in Pennsylvania here in the US. Following a lengthy restoration, the 2839 was returned to steam in its original Canadian Pacific appearance. Except for one little detail. While the engine was restored in its Canadian Pacific livery, it was given Southern Railway lettering instead. The American Southern Railway. The reason why? The 2839 had been leased to the Southern Railway for use in their steam program, and operated excursion trains for the Southern starting in 1979. During its time on the Southern, the 2839 had earned itself the unflattering nickname of Beer Can due to its semi-streamlining. And no, I'm not gonna go for the whole Beer Can joke like Jim Vanderkolk and other users have done in their retired Steam Excursion Star videos. However, the 2839's excursion service on the Southern only lasted until 1980, and we all know the story involving three certain locomotives in the Southern Steam program 
with Texas and Pacific 2104 Texas type number 610 having tons of power to pull the longer and heavier trains, however was unable to keep up the speed. The 2839 being able to rocket along down the line, but lacked the strength needed to pull the long and heavy trains. And finally, Chesapeake and Ohio number 2716 taking over for both engines, having the perfect balance of speed and power necessary for the Southern's excursion consists. That was until it was taken out of service in 1982 due to cracks in the engine's firebox. Back to the 2839, after its brief excursion life on the Southern, it was stored at the Blue Mountain and Reading Railroad before being placed in storage near Allentown, Pennsylvania. The BM&R did attempt to have the engine restored for use on their steam excursions, however, the 2839 ultimately ended up being sold at the end. After going through a number of different owners, the 2839 was loaded onto a flat car and shipped from Pennsylvania all the way out to Silmar, California, where it became part of the Nethercut collection. The Royal Hudson still resides there to this day on stag display, along with the 1912 built private Pullman car, having been restored to its original Canadian Pacific appearance. As with the 2860, that engine was retired in 1956 after receiving damage from a derailment outside of Vancouver, but was refurbished and brought back into service in 1957 and was transferred to Winnipeg to operate prairie service. It was retired again in 1959 and sat on the scrap line for five years, until 1964 when it was sold to the Vancouver Railway Museum Association. However, the museum couldn't find a place to display the semi-streamlined locomotive, so it was kept in storage in the Drake Street shops in Vancouver, once again facing an uncertain future. It would later be sold to Joe W. Hussey in 1970 and kept under private ownership until 1973 when Hussey sold the engine to the British Columbia government. The engine was then restored to steam at the Canadian Pacific Straight Street Roundhouse shops in late November of that year. The 2860 ran its first excursion between North Vancouver and Squamish on June 20th, 1974, which was operated by BC Rail. By the end of that year's tourist season, this Royal Hudson had carried 47,295 passengers and the excursion was deemed a complete success. It continued to operate excursion trains between May and October over the next 25 years, between 1974 and 1999. During that time, the 2860 even took part in the 1986 World Exposition on Transportation and Communication, otherwise known as Expo 86, held in Vancouver, being displayed outside as well as participating in the Grand Parade of Steam, along with many other attending steam locomotives from across Canada, as well as other visiting engines from the US and UK. Some of the visiting engines at Expo 86 included the 1874 built replica of George Stevenson's rocket, the 1875 Baldwin built Virginia and Truckee Railroad 440 American No. 22, the Inyo, the 1895 built private 044 tank engine, Dunn Robin, and the 1920 Lima built Union Pacific 060 Switcher No. 4466. It wasn't until 1999 that the 2860 was taken out of service due to problems with the engine's superheater. Around that time, the 2860 needed some major boiler work done if it was ever to steam again. However, a number of factors prevented this. These included a certain other Canadian Pacific steam locomotive being rebuilt in BC Rail's shops at that time, which I'll also cover later on down this list, and all of BC Rail's passenger services being put in jeopardy due to the railroad's eventual lead up to privatization. However, the 2860 did make another return to steam in 2006, its restoration taking more than a year to complete and costing more than $250,000. I'm not sure if that's in US dollars or Canadian dollars though, all of which was provided purely through donations. However, due to both CP and CN having a strict no steam policy, the 2860's excursions were limited to special occasions. The 2860's last excursion occurred on December 9th, 2010, running between North Vancouver and Squamish, after which its certification expired in January 2011. The engine is still owned by the British Columbia government, but has been permanently loaned to the West Coast Railway Association and can be seen on stag display in the Canadian National Roundhouse and Conference Centre in Squamish. 
Another restoration to have the 2860 return to Steam again is estimated to cost more than 1 million Canadian dollars, so its excursion back on December 9th, 2010 is most likely to be its last run in a very long time. As with the two other preserved Royal Hudsons, they are number 2850, the same engine that pulled the Royal Train in 1939 and earned the Royal Hudsons their nickname, on static display inside the Canadian Railway Museum, otherwise known as Expo Rail in St. Constant, Quebec, and number 2858 at the National Museum of Science and Technology in Canada's capital city of Ottawa. Number 13 London and Northeastern Railway number 4771, Green Arrow. Another sole surviving British steam locomotive, this time being number 4771, Green Arrow, the sole survivor of the London and Northeastern Railway's mixed traffic Class V2 262 Prairies, designed by Sir Nigel Gresley. Also, like Midland Compound number 1000 and Great Western number 6000, King George V, Green Arrow was also the very first member of its class. A total of 184 V2s were built between 1936 and 1944 at the LNER's workshops at Doncaster and Darlington, Green Arrow being built at Doncaster in June of 1936. Much of the design for the V2s actually came from those of Gresley's earlier Class A1 A3 Pacifics, the major differences between the two being the V2s having a shorter boiler, smaller driving wheels, and one less pair of leading wheels than their larger express passenger cousins. Numbering for the V2s was a bit mixed up at first, as the first 129 V2s were numbered 4771 to 4899, and the remaining 55 were numbered 3641 to 3695. In 1946, they were planned on being renumbered 700 to 883 as part of the LNER's renumbering policy. However, instead they were renumbered to 800 to 983. Then finally, after British Railways was formed in 1948, the number 6000 was added to the V2s along with all other former LNER engines, so they were renumbered again to 60800 to 60983. Like the rest of its siblings, Green Arrow was built for mixed traffic service, pulling both passenger and express goods trains, most notably fish trains between Aberdeen and London. In fact, number 4771 was actually named after one of these fish trains. The V2s have even become major contenders for the title of Engines That Won the War, due to how production of these engines continued during the Second World War, as well as the fact that, despite being mixed traffic engines, the V2s were able to achieve high speeds thanks to their 74-inch diameter driving wheels. In fact, one of the V2s was even rumored to have reached speeds of up to 100 miles per hour. Pretty handy for pulling express goods, but vital for transporting troops and material necessary to help win the war. The V2s were also one of only three classes of standard gauge tender 262 Prairie types in the UK, the other two being the Midland Railway's unsuccessful experimental packet locomotive built in 1908, and Sir Nigel Gresley's only two Class V4s, which were also his final class, in 1941. The latter engines I've also talked about back in my top 20 long lost American and British steam locomotives. Anyway, after the war, the V2s continued their usual mixed traffic work during the final few years of the LNER, and later for British Railways following nationalization in 1948. Eventually, all of the V2s were withdrawn from service between February 1962 and December 1966, and all but one were scrapped. Upon being withdrawn from service in August 1962, Green Arrow was chosen for preservation and was restored to Doncaster, eventually becoming the sole surviving Gresley V2 in existence. Once the engine's restoration was completed in 1963, it was originally intended to become a permanent exhibit at the proposed Municipal Museum in Leicester. However, those plans ended up being cancelled when the building the museum was to be housed in was planned to be demolished, so Green Arrow was placed in storage in the Pullman Car Company's Preston Park shop since September 1970. Number 4771 then became part of the National Collection in November 1971 while the National Railway Museum was being planned. It was moved again in January 1972 to Norwich Depot to be restored back to working order. When Green Arrow was returned to steam, it made its first trial run on March 28, 1973 to Ely. 
No, not Ely, Nevada, home of the Nevada Northern Railway here in the US, but Ely, Cambridgeshire in the UK. Since then, Green Arrow has had quite a long operating career in the preservation era, operating mainline tours as well as visiting several heritage railways, until being taken out of service on April 21st, 2008, when its boiler certificate was close to expiring. Its boiler certificate wasn't the only reason the engine was withdrawn from service. Another reason for Green Arrow's retirement was due to a crack found in the engine's cylinder block, and since the V2s had all three of their cylinders cast in one single piece, if one of them was out of action, then the whole block would need to be replaced. Upon withdrawal from service, Green Arrow returned to the National Collection, and was placed on static display at the National Railway Museum's Locomotion Museum in Shieldon. In 2015, number 4771 was announced to be one of the planned exhibits for the Great Central Railway's proposed museum located at Leicester North Station. However, it's unknown if the plans for the proposed museum are still going on, due to the National Lottery Heritage Fund having withdrawn their support for the project back in 2017. Today, Green Arrow is currently on static display at the Danum Gallery, Library, and Museum in Doncaster, on a three-year loan from the National Railway Museum starting back in February 2021, along with former Great Northern Railway Class C1-442 Atlantic No. 251.